everyone, and a warm welcome as we gather together for worship. The theme of our worship this summer Sunday is Growing in God. We will listen to the parable of the sower and the lavish generosity of the gardener. We pray that God will plant a new heart in us all and give us a faith for the future. We acknowledge with gratitude that we are on the traditional territories of the Mi'kmaq people. So in the spirit we gather together, let us pray. Creator God, we would grow with you. New shoots reaching out, hands stretched upward like leaves newly formed, soaking up your light and warmth. God, we would grow with you. Sustaining God, we would grow with you in sunshine and rain, in darkness and light, in cold days and summer days, from springtime to summer. God, we would grow with you. Lavish gardener God, we would grow with you and bring forth fruit that is pleasing to you, fed by your living water and sustaining warmth, giving sustenance to others. God, we would grow with you. Amen.
A reading from Psalm 119. O God, your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. I have sworn an oath and confirmed it to observe your righteous ordinances. I am severely afflicted. Give me life, O Lord, according to your word. Accept my offerings of praise, O Lord, and teach me your ordinances. I hold my life in my hand continually, but I do not forget your law. Your decrees are my heritage forever. They are the joy of my heart. I incline my heart to perform your statutes forever to the end. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. reading from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 13. That same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the lake. Such great crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat there, while the whole crowd stood on the beach. And he told them many things in parables, saying, Listen, a sower went out to sow. And as he sowed, some seeds fell on the path, and the birds came and ate them up. Other seeds fell on the rocky ground, where they did not have much soil, and they sprang up quickly, since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched, and since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and brought forth grain, 
some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Let anyone with ears listen. Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what is sown in the heart. This is what was sown on the path. As for what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet such a person has no root, but endures only for a while. And when trouble or persecution arises on account of the word, that person immediately falls away. As for what was sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word, but the cares of the world and the lure of wealth choke the word, and it yields nothing. But as for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields, in one case a hundredfold, in another sixty, and in another thirty. My mother was a wonderful gardener. It didn't matter whether it was flowers or vegetables. She could make anything grow. She knew when to plant and what kind of fertilizer to use, where to plant the seeds or the transplants, and what type of soil was needed for each plant and seed. She was not only a good gardener, but she was also a careful one. Nothing was ever wasted. I think her attitude, like many of her generation, came from growing plants during the years of the Depression and war years. 
During those lean times, seeds and transplants were not as plentiful as they are now, and they certainly had to be cared for year after year. In those years, of course, there was no running to the seed store or to a local nursery. There were no cheap plants or specially produced seeds that were genetically altered. Not like today, where plants grow sometimes without soil. I don't think that she would have understood or have appreciated the careless gardener or the careless sower in our parable from Matthew's Gospel. In the teachings of Jesus, we know that he used a wonderful teaching device called a parable. A parable shouldn't be confused with a moral tale because parables don't have a good character or a bad one. And you only learn the true moral of the story by deciding what it means in your life. The parable was meant to make the listener think. Also, we shouldn't try to see parables as telling us something about God or Jesus. Rather, they're meant to tell us more about ourselves. It's very common for Jesus in the Gospels to begin a parable by saying, the kingdom of God is like, and then he would proceed to tell the story. In the parable of the sower, the kingdom of heaven is compared to a farmer who went out to sow the seeds of the harvest. Part of the story is the lavish distribution of the seeds, which might seem wasteful to us. It might seem as if there was an unending supply of seeds to spread on the ground in every direction. There's a lavishness implied in this parable. The theme of generous giving is reminiscent of other parables Jesus told, such as the Good Samaritan, who takes care of the hurt stranger on the side of the road, or the generous vineyard owner, who pays all the workers the same even though they started work at different times. And the forgiving father who extravagantly welcomes home the prodigal. There is in all of these stories a lavishness which seems outside what we know or understand. But that is indeed what the message of Jesus was all about. Abundant life, outrageous love, lavish concern. There is an implication in the Jesus teachings that the kingdom calls us to give without counting the cost and without determining a limit. And that we send out our love and gifts never knowing the outcome. They may come back to us in full measure, or they may not ever come back to us. Like my mother, who would not understand planting like the sower in our parable, we find it hard to understand living as Jesus taught about the kingdom of heaven. We don't always understand that kind of generosity of spirit and abundant love, except perhaps with our own immediate family. We find it hard to wrap our heads around giving our gifts away and not knowing the return on our effort. Most of us like to know the yield and return on our investments whether it's time or money or talents. The story of the sower, like many of the parables, urges us to move to a place 
where we look only to doing the good news and not what we might get in return. I like the idea of comparing the sower story to the story of the prodigal son and the forgiving father. We are so much like that older son, whether we'd want to admit it or not. The one who stays at home but doesn't really understand his forgiving, foolish father. His question to his father after he is welcomed home the prodigal makes some sense to us. Why have you wasted your time and gifts on this worthless son of yours? We might ask the sower, why are you wasting the seeds on the ground that will never bring forth yield? But that's the lavish love that is shown in the kingdom of heaven, spoken about in the parables of Jesus. If we cannot love without counting the cost, then we limit what good we can do. If we live every minute thinking about what it will cost us, then we hinder the work of the Spirit because we overanalyze or we stop ourselves or we hold back. We hold back the kind word, the encouraging word, and then we're left with an empty feeling not knowing what good we can ever do. To live as Jesus lived and loved and to care as Jesus did means to follow in the footsteps of Jesus. It means that we open our hearts and our lives in ways that may seem scary and often reckless. We're called to broadcast our faith and love, to do it in lavish and outrageous ways, and sometimes in ways that may not make much sense. When we share our love in that way, some of the seeds will fall on the pathway, and people will step on our efforts, and it will hurt for a while. Some of the seeds will fall among weeds and other things will choke out the delight in our life. But some will fall on good soil and it will grow and thrive and the love will grow and others will also share their love lavishly. This is the kingdom of heaven to love without counting the cost or measuring our effort. This is the kingdom of heaven. This is our faith. This is our hope. Let us join our hearts in prayer. Let us pray. God, the great gardener, when we hear the parable of the sower, we wonder what kind of soil we are. We know that often we are the soil, which sometimes is hard, and we crack under the hardness and the seeds of new life find no home in us. There is no place, God, for your spirit to take root and grow within our lives. Instead, what we hear is easily forgotten and we neglect the word of life. Oh God, we know we can also be the kind of soil that grows thistles and bristles at times. Our thorny selves can strangle the good out of life and this keeps your spirit from growing within us. But, oh gracious one, we ask that with your help we might become better soil we can be the kind of soil that is rich and fertile, that receives the seed of life and it grows in us. 
At times we are receptive to your spirit, O oh God. Sometimes we can be those kind of people whom Jesus spoke of when he said, and some of the seed fell onto good soil where it bore fruit. We yearn to be a people who bear the fruit of the Spirit. We seek to be the community of faith that sow words of love and justice, mercy and truth. Growing God, we know that through you, we are both soil and sower. As the soil, we receive the word of life, and as the sower, we give out those words to others. In all the growing of our faith, May we always have ears to hear and eyes to see and become a harvest of life and love in this world. So in the spirit of Jesus, the parable teacher, we pray together saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation and deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. As we leave this worship time together, we pray that God has opened our eyes and ears to the presence of the Spirit, that the seeds of the Word scattered among us fall on fertile soil, that they take root in our hearts and our lives and produce an abundant harvest of good words and deeds. We are so blessed. Now let us be a blessing. Amen. <laughs>